Hi, I'm Ted from Everything Attachments, and we're here today to show you our Whitney. It's a RTC 3400. Uh, it's a real popular machine. My engineer here, we'll meet him in a minute, but he's been working on these for years. Uh, there's three of these I know of within about 20 miles of here. My brother has one at Construction Attachments. I have one for Everything Attachments, and Eddie's Welding in Stony Point has one. We all love these machines, and they, they're, they're an awesome machine. This does the brute work of uh, the metal fabrication from taking the metal from just a straight plate into different parts. Now these have been through the, the press break, but this gives you an idea of what we're going to show you what can cut out. So the good part about a Whitney is it's a punch and a plasma. So it punches a perfectly round hole and then it cuts out the part perfect for an easy assembly and making all kinds of things. I bought this machine used about a year ago. It was basically used for just the plasma part, cutting out bumpers for school buses. So all the punching part is still in really good condition. We just put new uh, ball screws in it, X and Y rails, precision ground ball screws from Whitney. We just replaced the bearings in the head for the torch. It uses a Hypertherm 200 high-speed torch. Um, this is pretty much the ultimate machine for this type of work. But because we're building, going to start building a Ted Brakes lawnmower because I have the patent on front brakes for zero turn lawnmowers, we're going to switch to a Cincinnati CL800 laser, which will cut up to one inch and a really, really small stuff really fast. This machine will cut up to, uh, will cut half inch plate at 110 inches a minute or down to 11 gauge at 300 inches a minute. It's capable of punching a one inch hole in half inch plate or a five and a quarter inch hole in quarter inch material. So it's really versatile. It's got a 40 ton punch in it and it pops holes really fast. So it's actually faster than a laser at most of what it does but just some of the things that I'm going to need in the future have to be done with a laser. So we're going to switch Miss Whitney out for a, for a Cincinnati laser. Uh, all of the, the balls on the tables, if any of them were bad, we've replaced them. All the balls on the end of the torch have got new Rex Roth bearings in it in just like the last week. The springs have been replaced inside for the repositioning machine. Uh, this, this machine, and we... we, we draw all of our stuff with SolidWorks 3D program. We love that. And then if you're going to run a Whitney, um, everybody that the, the, the three companies I've mentioned, we have all moved to a program that I started out with first, which is Sigma Nest. Sigma Nest has been writing the, the post that runs a Whitney since the Whitney has been built. A lot of companies have a post that, that kind of run it, but if they ever switch to the Sigma Nest post, then they just trash the system they've got and buy the Sigma Nest. It is a really great system to operate this. I hope that's what you plan on using if you buy this. Now, the way I'm going to sell this machine, it's I'm in Newton, North Carolina. I'm willing to take this machine, put it on a truck, bring it to you, leaving it in the same running position it is now in your shop. You provide the power, the gas, and the air. We're going to leave it fully set up, position perfect for $149,000 delivered, set up, and running. So just depending on, uh, we're going to show you how many punches and extra material we have for this. There's probably about eighty dollars to $100,000 worth of punches. Whoever ordered this machine to start with, I think, had an unlimited budget and just said, I want one of everything. So I don't use near that many of the punches, but we've got them if you need them. So if you use from light gauge to heavy gauge, we've probably got what you need. So this is the main control here. This is Matt. He's our machine operator. He's a great guy. Uh, and we're going to take you around and show you some of the components behind before we show you this thing in, in motion. Okay, so some of the components of this machine, this is the dust collector. It puts a fine red like dust in that 55 gallon drum. It's okay to throw in the dumpster so you don't have any special uh, waste that you have to worry about. It's no smoke comes out of the exhaust. 
During the winter, we leave the exhaust into the factory to get the heat. During the summer, we pipe it outside so you can do what you like. Some people actually put that outside, but because there's no smoke that comes out of it, you can put it inside or out. It's your choice. Um, it does use oxygen. You will need oxygen, liquid oxygen, to run this machine and compressed air. This is a Hypertherm High Speed HT2000. Um, it's the ultimate torch. We've, it works perfect. We've got extra tool carriers that you may need. Um, that's the complete hydraulic unit, which is what does the pressing of the holes in the metal. And then behind it is the electrical cabinet that has a lot of wires in it. We'll go around just to kind of give you an idea of why they charge so much to set these machines up in your shop. Normally you're looking, if, if you call Whitney and ask them to move this machine, if they unassemble it, put it on a truck, bring it to your shop, put it together, you're looking at about $25,000. That's part of what you're going to be buying for $149,000 set up and running in your shop. We're going to show you some of the tooling that we have. This starts at the, at the big stuff. This will be for thinner material. Each one of these is hundreds of dollars. We also have the mail-in that goes through. So it's just drawer after drawer. There's hundreds and hundreds. Every one of these drawers are full of dies and taps. Some of them don't even have the wax material removed from the end of them. They've never been used. So it's just drawer after drawer. They've got every kind of slot, every kind of square. I think they bought everything. So you get it all for $149,000. You don't get my cabinets. Let's go around to the other side. All right, so now we're over at the electric cabinet, and this is where a lot of the, just about every wire in this thing has to be pulled out of both sides. There is a ton of wires that go to this thing that make this machine work. It's all CNC controlled. That way you get a perfect return back to the same cut, to the same punch that you're making. It's got a fan and all in it to keep it cool. It is 480 volts. That's what you're going to have to have to run it. It takes 150 amp service. So that's what you're going to need. You're going to have, when you get it, the things I need is 480 volts, 150 amp service, a liquid oxygen tank, compressed air, and you're good to go. We'll do the rest. Okay, so this thing also has its own internal transformer its own air compressor to compensate to get the perfect air pressure which is required to make good plasma cuts hydraulic tank and reservoir you can see the pipes going to the smoke eater and this thing just every when you put it all together you're looking at forty thousand pounds worth of a metal eating machine this thing can eat about forty thousand pounds of metal and, and just like nothing so now we're going to go around we're going to show you the operation of it running Okay, so this is an example of the punch plugs that vary in size that we use from 3 eighths to half inch, some of it's quarter. This is a lot of weight. It's got a big, a big uh, compartment underneath it. We'll show you where that is. And this is going to be emptied just depending on how much punching you're doing. This is the bin down here that the plugs come out of. You just roll it out. I recommend emptying it before it gets too heavy to empty okay because the next thing you know you got a couple thousand pounds of plugs in there so keep it empty this is the slag bin this is where all the all the crap and debris coming from the plasma ends up and that's also safe to put in the dumpster there's nothing that has to go to some type of environmental uh, uh, resource distribution place to get rid of so that's the good part come over to this side Nate The old way of running the Fanuc control was with a floppy disk. Now we've converted this over to a regular PC. We can actually be at our other factory at our, where we assemble this miles away, send it by the internet to what program we need and everything's done here on a PC to, to add the programs that we're running. So we're gonna go ahead and start this 
And, and uh, this also, when you're running the Sigma Nest post, which I highly recommend, it has a super repositioning of the clamps. Those two big clamps that hold this sheet of steel and move it back and forth. When you want a part to be in, in the position where the clamp is, then it burns all it can out from around it then it automatically repositions the clamps and is able to continue burning apart where the clamp was. So that's a great thing. You basically load this sheet on this rolling table, roll it up against a pin stop, roll it into the clamps, it's positioned perfectly, and the machine does the rest from there. So we're going to watch it in work and see how, what this Whitney 3400 RTC can do. All right, so this is Matt. He's our operator. He was quick trained. Now, when we come and set this up, we'll give somebody there, if, if, they're from, if you've got all the softwares, and say, we can come with one program of our own. You can send us the DXFs. We'll come with our own program, show you what it will we'll run the program for you. If you've got an operator that already has all the equipment and so forth and the software, then we'll work with him for a little bit to get him trained on how to work this. Matt's a smart guy and he picked this up in a few days just about. So go ahead and give it a, give it a start, Matt. So what it's doing now, it's repositioning the punch and plasma head. It's punching holes through that sheet of steel. Then it will come back later and plasma out what we want. So in other words, it's making these holes right now in that sheet and then it'll come back later and cut it out. Come over to this side. Now, this is a violent machine, and I probably shouldn't be standing here, but I want to give you a good idea what it's doing. Every time it touches down and makes that noise, it's punching a plug out of that steel. That's 40 tons of pressure just popping it right out. So now it's cutting out the parts that the holes are already cut into. Then let's go to the other side next. As it plasma cuts out each of the parts, then the drawer drop, the, excuse me, as it cuts out all the parts out of the sheet of metal, then the door drops and lets the part out. We just rake them. Some people have a, uh, a large compartment there that they drop into. We just normally sit here with a rake and pull them out and then stack them on, a, on our uh, bin. So at three-eighths of an inch, it's probably cutting it somewhere about 150 inches a minute. It's cutting out just some small parts now. We call those free parts. They're parts that fit between different things and now it's starting into the main parts that we're after. After rebuilding all the ball screws, the X and Y axis, the parts that are coming off this machine are absolutely perfect. If I wasn't gonna re be building mowers, I would have no reason that I wouldn't continue to use this machine for many, many years. My father actually has a skeleton, and I call a skeleton after all the parts are cut out. The piece of metal, what's left, which is strap, is a pretty unique looking thing, depending on what you've cut out of it. We actually had it cleaned off and uh, powder coated, and it's at, and made a stand, and it's actually in my father's front yard at a very nice house. And a lot of his neighbors really uh, think it's a neat thing.
that's what you call a free part. Just something that fits in between, something you need, but fits in between a main part. So we try to get all of the metal we can out of this and try to make it look like a skeleton when we're through. And with Sigma Nest, which is what wrote this program, basically you take all your parts, you tell Sigma Nest what's the most effective way to make this get your money out of your metal. It writes the program for the machine and gets all the parts that are, that are possible to get out of this machine where you're not having to do it manually. So as it gets close to the end of that sheet, it's going to drop down the stops, hold the sheet still, and then reposition. Every time you hear that purge sound, that's the uh, air cleaner, which is the smoke eater, uh, purging the filters to keep them clean so it doesn't have to have the filters replaced. You can see the plate's starting to get kind of flimsy because we've gotten most of the metal out of it. But we're going to get it all before it's over with. Parts add up to money. Yeah, he doesn't know. So it's been burning on this sheet now for about 45 minutes. You can see it's getting really flexible. The arms just came down to hold the sheet. The clamps just repositioned. It picked it up in a different place and now it can cut more parts out where the clamps were. Okay, so this is the sheet. This is 45 minutes later. Here's the stack of parts over here. Walk over here, Nate. 
These are what makes the uprights for all our severe extreme duty box blades. We're able to get this many parts in 45 minutes. They're now ready for the Cincinnati press break to finish up to get ready to go to welding. My engineer, he wrote a program real quick so we could do this video to show you how well this machine worked. He only forgot to put in a couple of parts. So normally the whole sheet would be completely look like a skeleton. He forgot to put in a couple of parts. So, um, but you can still get the general idea. You take a sheet of steel and you turn it into parts in, in less than an hour. It's a beautiful machine. I'll hate to see it go, but uh, really looking forward to having a Cincinnati laser. Hope it does good for you. If you don't need the transportation and the setup, definitely the price could be a little bit negotiable. So we hope you have a, as good a result as we've had with this machine as a new owner.